Good evening, everyone. This is Sangeeta Saxena, editor, Aviation and Defence Universe, getting you live from Delhi, where we are in a rundown to the Indian Army Day, which is beginning uh, for us from today. It's the first day of first interviews for the day, the raising day of the Indian Army on 15th of January. And we are looking forward to hearing a lot about the Army in 2023. And who else but the right man in front of us this evening? We have with us Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, who is, uh, you know, everybody knows him as a former DGMO, it remembers him as the former DG Infantry, he's commanded a corps, he's commanded a div, he's everything just right for us to know from his horse's mouth that what is Indian Army going to be in 2023. Good evening, sir, and welcome to ADU's chat room. Yeah, thank you, and Jaihan to you and to the viewers, thank you to the Mission Defense Universe. Uh, always a pleasure to be on your platform. It's an honor indeed, actually. And uh, I look forward to the conversation. Thank you very much. Sir, it's just wonderful. Actually, you know, when we were beginning this series for the Indian Army Day, you know, we thought that we'd like to stress on what is there this year gets for the Indian Army, both keeping in mind the Army itself, the soldier, the arms, the equipment, the weaponry, everything. So we just want to have a very wholesome discussion about what is 2023 slate for the Indian Army. Uh, yes, I think 2023 would be a benchmark year for the Army. There are too many challenges uh, and the challenges have manifested in 2020, uh, but they continue to be uh, there. The threats are there. The Indian Army uh, will have to uh, be effective in their uh, performance of their primary role, that is the border defense, uh, both especially along the line of actual control, the 348 kilometer India China border, uh, and the line of control also. The line of control uh, is, has been peaceful. Uh, fortunately, the ceasefire uh, uh, holds out, uh, but it's a very fragile ceasefire, and uh, we have to ensure a moral ascendancy there, and we have to continue to ensure. Uh, that we have a uh, near zero infiltration because the GNK situation has uh, seen uh, improvement, including uh, the violence levels are low. But the primary challenge will be uh, in maintaining the peace and tranquility and uh, the sanctity of the land of actual control, uh, and also arming the soldier, looking after the soldier, the welfare of the soldier, the equipment of the soldier, uh, modernization, uh, technology uh, uh, induction. So there, there are there are a number of challenges, and the main challenge would be uh, how do we uh, how do we train and uh, make Agni Veer a part of the unit? You know, this transformation is something which uh, has not only to be thought through; it has to be practiced, and there will be new challenges. And our leadership will have to be, at especially the fighting functional level, uh, will have to face these challenges, and they are facing this challenge. Not that they are not doing it, uh, but getting it right uh, would be very important. Uh, and then, of course, we have the theatrization, the Atmirvarta uh, in defense uh, manufacturing. So there, there, are, there are a number of things which are happening. So we've got to get the complete thing right, get the transition right, because transition is very important, and make sure that we are present relevant and future ready. All right, sir. And uh, so when the, we talk of so much on the plate, I think one most important, important factor is that uh, Somewhere down the line, you know, what has happened is that uh, we talk of uh, the challenges. We also would like to understand that uh, with such volatile borders, uh, is there a thing like having the soldier absolutely state of the art, ready to face any weather, anything? And how, what have you done in the last two years so that, you know, we make it easy for him there in those heights? and uh, ready to face uh, if any challenge arises. See, uh, when we talk of the soldier, we understand that the burden of the soldier, and the soldier is the, uh, is the uh, you know, the primary system which ensures uh, our territorial integrity. Uh, so the, the, the burden of the soldier is one too much. Uh, every man carries about uh, 25 to 30 kgs uh, of battle loads, uh, combat loads. And uh, the challenge is how to make sure that uh, that is reduced from head to heel. Uh, he's better armed, he's better protective, uh, protected, and uh, he's more agile, he's lean, he's mean, and uh, he has seasonal habitat. Uh, the habitat is very important, especially you know, given our 
challenges are all in the altitude area in the mountain areas. You know, the three, four hundred kilometer inter-China border all altitude. Uh, all means all, literally, from Karakoram to Kibutu, uh, it's all altitude. And then we have uh, again the LC is uh, mostly uh, altitude and about and, uh, fifty percent about mountains. So the challenge is in uh, arming the soldier, and that is where I think the infantry uh, has uh, got a major role to play. And supported by uh, all arms, so the artillery, uh, the engineer, the sappers, uh, the air, army, air defense, uh, the uh, the metal infantry. You now the armored uh, has you know we we going for light tanks. Uh, so uh, all this uh, the terrain along the uh, India-China border we always thought was non-tankable, but then there were times we we had moved the uh, armored up earlier also. It's not that we don't move them up, but the quantum was less. You now the quantum is more uh, because the Chinese, uh, the PLA especially, they have. Uh, uh, Tank regiments, they have tank uh, divisions, uh, mechanized divisions. So we we are living up to that challenge. If you look at it in the last two three years, a number of things have been done to the soldier. The arms are better. The small arms uh, are there about seven lakh, seven point two lakh small arms are being uh, procured in the processes. We are getting the uh, the AK two zero four production now. Uh, we are getting about forty four uh, uh, with the machine guns and the light machine guns. We got uh, anti tank uh, guided missiles. Then drones, the drones, drones are coming in a uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in both quality and quantity. Uh, so technology is coming up. We got three D printing going on for the habitat. So a number of things are happening. But the challenge still remains. Whatever happens, it has to be a continuous process. It's a constant process. It's not that it's a one time thing. You do it and it's end all. His body protection, his bulletproof jacket, his butt cars, his helmets. Uh, his uh, night vision devices, that way, you know, the, the the soldiers' night vision, devices, and the weapons also, better sights, uh, better accuracy, lightweight weapons. So the, the, there is a uh, uh, you know the, the whole lot is very big, and we got to not only induct it, we got to exploit it, we got to make sure that it goes on with our doctrines, uh, we it goes on, uh, it is uh, embedded into our uh, war fighting, and more importantly, all this capability is required. For war prevention or deterrence, as we call it, because the other military is supposed to, uh, you know, they're not meant to fight wars. They're meant to ensure peace. There is a difference. Everyone thinks that the, the, the army is meant to fight wars. No, the army is meant to ensure peace through preparedness, through operation readiness, and defense preparedness, operation readiness is the focus, and that is what the army's focus is going to be in 2023. And the challenges the, along the LAC are only going to increase. Uh, the PLA's uh, incursions or transgressions uh, are going to increase in frequency and ferocity. Both uh, we are seeing in Jiangxi, and uh, we have uh, uh, from Kalwan onwards, we are up to it. That is why we have seen that uh, post Kalwan, there has been uh, very, uh, uh, very few instances of even shoving and pushing. Uh, so, and uh, China respects strength, and our soldiers are our strength. Like I said, the only challenge is when the Agni will start coming in, and that's. Two to three years down the line, but the start is 2023. Uh, how do we uh, put them into the same fabric, uh, the same ethos, the same values, the same uh, jazba? Uh, that is very important, and that is where the challenge for the army. For but that's why 2023 is a very important year because the, the soldier the, uh, is uh, the weapon. Uh, he's the best weapon we have, and that is where the army is able to play a very important. Their training, sir, has already begun at the Guards Regimental Center, sir. So, uh, how do you expect uh, this thing to flow now into the actual veins of the Indian Army? Now, the twenty-seven thousand Agni Veers, as per the media reports, who have been started training in the first week of uh, January, uh, they will be training for about thirty-six. Uh, uh, they'll be training for six months, actually. So the, that's not twenty-four, uh, twenty-five, twenty-six weeks, and uh, then they come to the unit, and uh, that is where the challenge for the COs will be, uh, because uh, you know they, they are neither soldiers. They call army veers. A lot expected from them. They themselves are not certain as to what their future is going to be. It's for four years, uh, but the fact is, it is not the army veers per se which is matter. It is the effectiveness of the Indian Army, uh, the units, the formations. So that cannot get affected. And uh, I'm sure the army will find uh, solutions to it. Uh, the transition has to be uh, managed. It has to be smooth. We will have to understand the changes that are coming in. And it is not only the uh, the leadership. It is the junior leaders, the the, the junior commissioned officers, the, the non commissioned officers. They'll have to do their bit to make sure that the man is fighting fit, and he has a sense of belonging to the unit. He has a sense of ownership in the unit. 
and uh, the ethos of the unit is not uh, degraded. So Agni is going to be a major challenge. And sir, uh, when we talk about it being a challenge, uh, is there a set uh, sort of uh, role given to these Agni wheels, which is envisaged for them, which is already not being done by the soldiers uh, in the army units till now? No, I, I, don't, I really don't think so, because uh, a soldier's uh, role is defined, his tasks are defined, his mission is defined. And uh, uh, it is uh, he has to fit into the team. Uh, it, it is the team spirit, uh, the spirit, the core of the team. Uh, it is not a one man this thing. Uh, unfortunately, the weakest, uh, the strength of the unit or the subunit or the section uh, or any uh, team is the weakest link. So Agni Veer cannot become a weakest link. So they they have to make sure ensure that uh, the uh, Agni Veers are totally at it. Uh, with you know we have to. Absorb them uh, as our own. Uh, we cannot start by Agni Veers, Agni Veers, Agni Veers. We have to absorb them as soldiers, give them the sense of pride uh, which the soldier has. So they should not feel that he's there for four years. It is not a, uh, you know, it's not a, army is not a tour of duty, it's not a tourist place. It's a very, very hot time, right? very hot time. So, you know, in, a, in a bunker or a six man bunker, you have eight men staying on there, hmm. uh, two men doing duty. And it's a 10 by 10 bunker. Uh, a 10 by 10 bunker is our eight by eight bunker with 10 men, eight men, you know. Uh, it's very, it's, uh, it's not easy. So they have to live as a team. They have to breathe as a team, but a function as a team. So that is uh, the challenge, uh, what I'm talking about. And uh, I'm sure the, the Indian Army will do that. And uh, we have, uh, uh, you know, we have the expertise, we have the experience, especially in, uh, uh, at the unit levels uh, for uh, all units across the board. Uh, what drives us is basically the Nam Namak Tishan, as we call it. So uh, I think we will work on this. And the pride they'll feel by being a part of the Indian Army, I think that would be a great morale booster for them also. So I think somewhere there's going to be a good handshake between the two feelings which came together as adverse. Probably they'll become better now, you know. Maybe uh, we can just hope for it. You know. You're absolutely right. You've seen the Army as much as anyone else. The Army wives are the chef of the Army, actually. <laughs> so the force behind the force as the uh, book has come out. So uh, what you're saying is absolutely true and absolutely right. So uh, I, I, I think we will be able to do that. So 2023, we'll see the Agni News coming in and we get it right, uh, uh, we'll get over this uh, transformation. Right, sir. And sir, um, what about, uh, you know, the need uh, of the Indian Army, uh, which very strongly is being focused on completion with the Make in India and Atma River route. Now, does that delay the requirement uh, for the Indian Army a bit, which would have been easier to just get them off the shelf and uh, make everything ready for the soldier? But when you're doing it in-house, and it definitely takes time. So uh, is that a brilliant idea uh, at this juncture in history where we have not so friendly neighbors? I know. Well, yes, there, there, there are apprehensions, and you're absolutely right. Uh, but then, uh, at some point of time, when you talk of uh, you know a risen, responsible, resurgent India, uh, we 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 can't be responsible and risen if we are dependent. So strategic autonomy flows from uh, being independent in thought, independent decision making. Uh, it, uh, we we really we, we exporting about uh, sixty five to sixty seven percent of our equipment, and uh, so that is not the right thing to do. So we have a what we what was earlier known negative list. Now we got a positive indigenous list. Uh, it it over about thirty one hundred items. Uh, yeah. We have uh, revamped the ordnance factory board. Uh, more accountable. Uh, we have the DPSUs be more accountable. We have uh, invested in the R and D. There the public pri private partnership uh, which is there. We have a big uh, uh, industrial houses like uh, uh, Baba Kalyani's uh, Bharat Forge. We have L and T. Uh, and uh, uh, these are also being, and there are many others, and, and the, we are exploiting MSMEs. That's the main thing, the MSMEs. Uh, we're giving them an incentive. But this takes time. We come up from, we, we have uh, last year, 2022, uh, we have exported 13,000 crores. Uh, this year, the target is 17,000 crores. Uh, so we have a judicious mix. Uh, whereas we are going in for uh, indigenization, we are going for Atmir Parta, but that has not stopped us from uh, importing uh, what we wanted to import. We, we have the missiles uh, coming in, we have, uh, the, uh, you know, the army defense, these shots, uh, mm -hmm. now we find that 
we have the ATGMs, GMs, uh, uh, the Mirage coming, we have the Navy and therefore the equipment coming. Mm -hmm. So uh, these these are uh, actually, you know, MBD Mirage are there. So th there is a very judicious mix, I must say. Uh, but we are moving towards uh, uh, self realization of defense manufacturing, and uh, that is the need. So I think four to five years down the line, we'll find uh, a different India in defense manufacturing. India, which is a net exporter, uh, hopefully not in the five years, let's say in 10 years. Uh, so technology is something we can uh, buy. Uh, we do really don't have to, and we, we, should, we should actually force on the you know, late mover advantage. Uh, let us jump to uh, new technologies, develop our own, and have them mark one, mark two, mark three, mark four, and improvements on that. So it is not that the weapon system which was inducted has a long time of has been about 30, 40 years. And uh, we are also extracting technology. We need warfare is about precision technologies, uh, precision uh, you know, multi-domain warfare, precision multi-domain warfare. Uh, drones in a big bay, uh, we are exploiting that. Uh, we have drones. Uh, a big order for the drones actually, which has just been passed uh, mm -hmm. this week. Yes. On the, uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, I think we are set to grow. And uh, given the challenges, the main thing is the challenges, uh, right? And they are going to manifest, and they're going to ma they are already manifesting uh, the threats, uh, especially uh, we see a, a China, Pakistan nexus, and uh, if uh, uh, things go uh, mighty wrong. Uh, uh, Pakistan um, is uh, is a problem state. Uh, let's face facts. Uh, uh, Pakistan is a problem state. Uh, so uh, China, we had, uh, we are managing well. Uh, we have a good strategy with China. Defend the land. It's a three D strategy, as I call it. Defend uh, the LAC, dominate the seas, mm -hmm. uh, and also you know deter China's aggressiveness by bind to balance with like minded nations. Uh, so the challenge would be to make sure that we. Uh, transit the transition which you're talking about, the transformation you're talking about, uh, mm -hmm. that goes on smooth. Uh, be it equipment, be it doctrinal aspects, be it manpower, be it leadership, uh, be it a strategic thought. Uh, we still awaiting a national security strategy, and then we want to shift to theatrization. National security strategy or not, theatrization should start. The national security strategy will come. It's uh, it is no one's uh, uh, you know. Uh, if it, it's not that you need a document to start theatrization, yes, a national security strategy will definitely help. Uh, but if the national security strategy is not in the public domain, it does not mean that we do not know our threats, opportunities, and challenges. We know our threats, opportunities, and challenges, and we know uh, our strategic uh, assets and concerns both. So we have to move ahead, and theatrization is uh, uh, is the answer. Jointness and theatrization has to be done. Uh, as soon as possible, as well as possible. And uh, this also is related to the budget. Fortunately, uh, the government has uh, uh, dusted the Shkirka committee. I was a member of the Shkirka committee report. And uh, the right sizing is uh, now being taken very seriously. Uh, it is uh, being forced upon the, uh, you know, uh, uh, armed forces world over uh, are very, you know, resistant to change. Uh, so the, the Shkirka committee about 800 odd recommendations. Done. So uh, I think the things are moving in a, in a in a right direction, and that is where I think the challenge lies for the chief of army staff who's been uh, in office for about uh, eight nine months, and he he has got time to go. So his vision is clear that these changes have to come in. Uh, we are not resisting the change, uh, but the transition management uh, is uh, going to be in a in a you know, very systematic manner, uh, so that our effectiveness, present effectiveness, not lost. And we are future ready for new age warfare. But sir, one thing with the whispers of discontent uh, with the theatrization for the other two forces, uh, will that make it easy for the Indian Army uh, to go ahead with it? No, no nothing comes easy. Uh, even uh, let me let me quote a small example. We talk about the, uh, the the United States of America, the, the United States Armed Forces. That you know, it was forced upon them in 1986. Mm -hmm. uh, World War II. And uh, let me give a small example. I, had, uh, I was the co-chair for the ESG, the Expert Secure Steering Group. And uh, I had uh, visited uh, Fort Shepherd in Hawaii. So they keep you, well, we, we, there's a lot of work to do. Uh, but then I said, let me play golf for uh, half a day and all. So uh, you know, I like to play golf. So, so we played golf in Fort Shepherd. We were playing golf for the American General Television. The Navy's got a beautiful course. So I said, but we are, why not playing that course then? 
so he said no the army is not allowed to play in the naval force <laughs> right. uh, next year was calling on the the naval commander the three star there so uh, he, he said the uh, general i believe you are able to call for us so i'm not able to i like to play ball he said Uh, you should play. They will get very good asset, but the, I believe the army is not a lot of places. No, that's for the U.S. army, not the Indian army. So uh, when you talk of theatralization and jointness, you know we we are uh, we Indians are very critical of ourselves. Actually, if you look at it, we over the years we done so very well. Nineteen seventy one war is of course you know one example, which I think is a uh, is one of the best examples of joint warfare. Uh, we we have Operation Pawan. We have Operation Maldives as part of it. It was it was a joint operation. Army, Air Force, Navy. Uh, standing up to it, what we need is a formal structure. Why we need formal structures is to optimize the defense budget. Right? So we have to optimize it. We we uh, we we need uh, uh, combined commands, logistics has to be combined, training has to be combined, space, cyber, uh, that has to be you know uh, uh, joint commands. Then we need theatralization. We we can't be fighting our own battles in various theaters. Uh, we need a theater for the western sector we need a, I, i suppose we need two theaters for china because there is a very little connect uh, between the western theater uh, mm-hmm. facing china and the northeastern theater which is facing china uh, mm-hmm. there's no complementarity uh, because they're far removed so i think we need two theaters with china and of course then we need a maritime or a peninsular theater and we need a uh, aerospace theater not a air defense command i think we go wrong by saying air defense command the very fact that we're saying air defense command Uh, I think it gives you a very restricted sort of a, hmm. a space for uh, you know it has to aerospace command. Uh, when you talk of deterrence, and we have to have dissuasive deterrence with China, we have to have deterrence with Pakistan. We have to deter Pakistan. We have to change Pakistan's behavior in the in the mid to long term uh, of not waging the proxy war. And it has already happened. If you look at uh, you know uh, post to the post. Uh, The uh, the strikes post uh, Pulwama uh, on Jabba top terrorist training camp, you find uh, that the violence levels are restricted to uh, to JNK. So we are doing that, and uh, with China also, uh, the 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 treaties do stand. A lot of people say the treaties. I mean, Galwan. Okay, Galwan was one of the incidents. Jiang Se, uh, uh, what has come on 9th of December? It, uh, year on year, it has happened. It's nothing new. Uh, it, okay. This has happened over the years. It, it it is not that this is the first time it's happened. It's not the first time. It's not the last time. Hope is the last time. It's not the last time. Mm-hmm. And we are effective, and that effectiveness is what uh, stands us in good stead. And we are not only we are, we are looking ahead. We are looking at challenges ahead. So I I, I feel that we are on the right track. Uh, trust the army. Trust the armed forces uh, to perform. Uh, support them. Yes, we should we should come under media scrutiny. Definitely, we should come under uh, media scrutiny. Why not? Uh, that will only uh, you know make sure that we are better. So that is why I respect your channel because you are very responsible. Uh, most of the ch- channels I find uh, you pick out selective picking of uh, words, uh, like even General Darabney uh, when he spoke about theatralization. Uh, if you hear the complete talk, well, he he was for it. It's not that he was not for it. What what is it portrayed as? You know, where, where it is a long way off. No, it is mm-hmm. the need of the day. Uh, so uh, let's not. Uh, So uh, that's why I thank you for, for a very responsible, uh, you know, defense uh, uh, channel which you uh, support and which you run and which you edit. No, absolutely, sir. I mean, for us, eventually, the, we all have a common goal, and uh, I think uh, it's the role of the media to stick on to that goal along with forces, uh, sir. When the when we talk of the uh, Indian Army uh, waiting to celebrate its raising day in a few days. uh what do you think is the wish list for this year which you think should actually finish by december 2023 which is dire need for the indian army the army the soldier yes and and yeah. not only that also the requirement of infrastructure development in areas which actually require because china definitely has heavy infrastructure across its borders and uh, uh, we uh, we do we match the strength somewhere how do we there should be a wish list with us that okay this is the year we want to finish we are in january when we come to the end of december these these things should be there when they come from people like you 
who have the interest, absolute whole soul interest of the nation in mind, I think somewhere down the lane, it will, you know, uh, affect the people who are making the policies and uh, trying to implement them. I think you, you nailed it. Infrastructure uh, development, especially along the India-China border, is a must. And uh, it has to integrate infrastructure development. It can't be, you know, uh, standalone modes. It has to integrate it via a body. And uh, something which I've been uh, talking and writing about, something with the DMRC, Delhi Metro. No, if Delhi Metro can do it in Delhi, I see no reason for we, we can't do it along the borders. Uh, the clearances are required. There are too many channels, too many people to, you know, take clearances from. Uh, it is maddening actually wants to look at it. But now the focus is there. The Land Act of uh, 2014 uh, uh, should, uh, you know, uh, should say that within a kilometer of the border areas of China, all that is not applicable. Uh, so uh, the Supreme Court rulings are there. We all are uh, wildlife sanctuaries uh, uh, along the border areas, and you cannot construct them. So there, there are limitations in democracy uh, where uh, there are different stakeholders. Uh, but what we need is infrastructure, not only for defense, but for the people of our border areas. Today, our border areas are being vacated. Uh, the people are coming down to nearby towns and cities. Uh, we have the uh, you know vibrant village project now the, uh, along the border areas. Uh, it is not akin to the 600 plus border villages which China is now occupying. Uh, but it is a vibrant village project where uh, the villagers being encouraged to stay on and to populate the village. Because habitation is very important. If they vacate the village, all the old people are there, uh, it is not going to work out. So this project is an excellent project. It's being tried out. And uh, I'm sure it will succeed. Uh, we need uh, habitation along our borders and we need tourism, we need economic development. And that uh, will only come off infrastructure is there. Health, is, uh, health has to be better, health, uh, medical care has to be better. So uh, I think the integrated approach is already there. I've been talking to people, I've been part of some of the you know, discussions and studies. Uh, so uh, the, uh, but we, I wish the vibrant project a success has been driven uh, right from the top in Delhi and the states also. So we, we, we are at it, infrastructure development, the soldiers, the army, uh, we are part of the army without the, you know, let's say, I, I respect the people of the border areas, without them we will not going to survive. Uh, we survive in the border areas because they help us out. Uh, we are one. Uh, it, it is like a family or it is not that they are civilians, they are military. Uh, they help us carry our loads, they are the ones who encourage us, they are the ones who give us early warning a lot of things, uh, including, uh, you know, disasters or avalanches. Uh, we also help them, they also help. It is, it is one, it's one India. So you right out there. There's the infrastructure development, uh, it's the soldier, it is the armament, it's modernization, it's theatrization, it's structures. So it, it, it is it is a lot of work to be done. Right. So the wish list is strong huh? and long. Yes, it is it is long, it is strong, and it's achievable. Uh, we have the will, uh, we have the wherewithal, and we will do it. And and sir, I, yes, absolutely, sir. And one thing which I, in continuation to what you were just talking about, uh, have has the Indian Army somewhere down the line uh, been a little uh, skeptic about using perception management at the borders, sir? Uh, yes, uh, to an extent, yes, uh, we, we have to. Uh, because uh, perception management is a very is an integral part of uh, our war uh, uh, doctrines. Now it's not that you know when you talk of uh, essential elements of national power, time, uh, uh, diplomatic information, military economics, uh, the information becomes very important tool. Today, to virtual societal warfare is uh, is the warfare of the future. I don't need to go to war uh, today because you go to war to uh, basically impose your will on your adversary. Right. So you go to military means all other means are failed. But today I resort to virtuous societal warfare and change the change the beliefs and the values of the people alone. Uh, you look at our you know social media such a platform. Every every and you you being fed into uh, fed information. You fed this thing, and we start believing in it. Uh, so we we need the uh, perception management uh, as a tool, and that is where I I, I also feel that the media is doing an excellent job. Uh, the way they support uh, the armed forces. Uh, I really thank each one of them. Uh, but yes, we, at times uh, we go overboard also. It's not that we don't go overboard, we do go overboard because that's what the public wants. 
uh, but then we have responsible media and uh, media I think should be integrated into the you know uh, i won't say embedded embedded is wrong word they should be integrated into the uh, into the army and the uh, army uh, has to have they already have the iw and uh, the strategy communication the on the strategies so things are going and sir uh, when we talk of perception management there is another very important factor which comes to my mind which is uh, you know having a very effective intelligence uh, at these borders and uh, army has uh it's you know it has a four pronged situation where it you know it's a it's a collection of information and uh, intelligence so uh, army you know uh, i might be wrong in saying but then it's somewhere down the lane parallel to the rnaw and in collecting and creating uh, you know an easy and uh, Uh, you know, an advanced planning sort of an uh, atmosphere for the people who plan now uh, in that case sir uh, do we have something lacking when it comes to our int collection especially at the uh, borders uh, yes I, i think you know intelligence uh, by its very nature are very you know they don't share things uh, and we we have issues uh, at the you know the, the, the intelligence are divided into three strategic intelligence operational intelligence tactical intelligence the tactical intelligence where the army in contact is uh, is looking at and the tactical intelligence it is the strategic intelligence which is not with the army that is that is operational intelligence the army in terms of peace right? so the army gets takes the blame for it without having the resource and the authority to do anything about it the, the authority like you rightly said the you know there are other intelligence there are 40 national intelligence agencies so somewhere you know we we have to uh, the uh, uh, we got to synthesize everything we got to harmonize everything so that doesn't happen all the time it's a strat- like let's take the example of china I, i think we failed to discern the strategic intent of china that that's my view the strategic intent is very important uh, we are all you know covid was there the 2020 we are looking at covid we had a india china you know sort of a bye bye going on reaching bye bye again mm-hmm. uh, and we 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 could not uh, discern the strategic intent fortunately for us uh, we reacted very well uh, and that is where uh, we took the china our resolve and resistance to china was a surprise china took us a surprise initially uh, but then our reactions were so good so that is where the stalemate is uh, they are sitting there we are sitting there it's okay fine but yes you are right intelligence uh, continues to be weakness and i don't see much happening there uh, the cargill review committee after the cargill uh, uh, war also spoke about intelligence uh, we are back to the same phase so the harmonization between strategic intelligence with operational intelligence with tactical intelligence somewhere has to take place uh, we have too many too many uh, uh, structures dealing with it you know we have the itbp under the ministry of home affairs right they are not under the ministry of defense the yes. bsf in the jnk is under operation control of the indian army but the itbp is not so they get the inputs we have the cap set uh, we have the indian army then we have the state police and we have uh, you know we we don't uh, actually there's a difference between border management border defense border security and border protection and we we, we make a, sometimes we, we do our structures are such uh, we try to combine everything and do everything. and the complete blame comes on the army it's so unfortunate the border management not army border defense is army I, yes, I'm, I'm I'm talking in defense. Yes, absolutely. So, I think you know these are uh, real things which uh, I feel that uh, we really need to sit down and brainstorm at all levels. Then probably something comes out of it, and uh, probably you need things to get channelized and actually flow from uh, decision makers to implementers. I think that is somewhere where. Uh, probably we are lacking but i think you know i think every uh, there are limitations and restrictions like you said so sir uh, our most important uh, man is the soldier he's great we have the best soldiers possible now we do we need to improve the resilience of the soldier and if so how can we do it you will know just you he, he is the best <laughs> so honestly i admit it 
he he is the best you know we could we we got to consolidate our strength uh, I, i was asking one of my this thing that uh, which is the most favorite weapon i said i don't have a favorite but my soldier's my weapon what soldier's the best weapon i have for the military let the soldier be let him let give the space he needs give the pride he needs give the self respect he needs what does he need a little bit of respect what is he asking for nothing today the indian army soldier let me tell you and i challenge this is the most effective and the most cost effective i'm talking about you he's paid the least it delivers the maximum and keep looking at the pain allowances pain allowances everyone says you know that much percentage of pain allowances where the where the budget of modernization sorry you can have modernization but without the soldier and, and the russia ukraine war for example so we got to learn whatever the technology is being deployed it is the soldier in the end that matters that's what i'm saying just just leave the army alone as it is to do their job so don't uh, you know but don't try to uh, force things on them leave the soldier with his pride give him a little bit of respect which is uh, which has happened to a great extent uh, but it is being degraded let me be very honest with you uh, we we have to keep the soldier at the pedestal to his and he will perform and said to improve this resilience on a physical level sir is he overworked and does he need something you know when we go through uh, a lot of uh, research papers which come uh, from from the various armies of the world they talk a lot about uh, mindfulness meditation and uh, things like that for the soldier does the indian army also require some sort of a physical and emotional building uh, mm. of the resilience uh, through some sort of sources like uh, these uh yes things are changing we have to live in a world which is uh, internet network where we uh, the, the pressure of the soldiers uh, both uh, professional and domestic uh, there are there are certain weak soldiers who can't get uh, there there are lapses uh, also when we uh, when we do not anticipate uh, what a soldier might do Uh, we we have uh, 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 you know it's not easy to see blood uh, it's not easy you know it it does affect uh, different it people at different times uh, soldier soldier and they come from the same society as we come from they they're not born anywhere else they are from the same society so uh, what you're saying is right and uh, we we have uh, we have systems in place we we have schemes in place we have education uh, we have uh, psychologists going to the units talking about it Uh, we have created the buddy system which is a very effective system a buddy system very effective my buddy knows uh, and buddy system at every level my buddy and me are uh, you know are conjoined in many ways uh, so th- th- that is where the uh, you know the inbuilt systems come into play uh, but to say that everything is well and nothing is wrong that also be incorrect totally. yes there will be uh, you know there will be instances where uh, things will go wrong and we have to accept that uh, it's not that everything is uh, always uh, at the optimal level uh, things will go wrong we'll correct it so what uh, but yes we need it but we don't need it as the other armies do need it we have to understand the indian character the indian soldier his background uh, the ethos of the indian army the fabric of the indian army uh, the regimental system uh, i i spoke in a channel earlier also the dg infantry uh, there were there were a number of uh, you know visiting dignitaries from foreign armies uh, who asked me about the regimental system because regimental system is something which is uh, you know which is there in many in some of the armies especially the british uh, mm-hmm. the whole of the british army and that's our strength uh, i will die for my unit without looking back i'll die for my people uh, it is the, the, the nation definitely the army is different but my my unit comes first and i'm sure you'll bear me out absolutely i agree with what you're saying sir it was really wonderful speaking with you it actually you know we are never satisfied at the end we want more so you know you always want okay we can ask this you you just the right person to tell us i think you know today's discussion was wonderful we whatever left we leave it for the next month there going to be more instances when we like to speak with you with more themes and focuses in mind but at the moment sir my last uh, from you is that three important morale boosters for the indian army um, indian army uh, fortunately doesn't need morale booster the morale is very high <laughs> <laughs> very good sir. that <laughs> was just the best absolutely indian army doesn't need is morale booster because I, th- I think it is. A, it's a top level. It's a, it's a top level army. 
uh, three important ones also like you say uh, if, I, if i were to say uh, uh, would be uh, again going back to the very basics right little bit of respect little bit of regard and the izzat that is all that is required nothing else he will he will perform he will he'll continue to do that uh, uh, don't question his intent please when you start questioning intent he feels bad there will be lapses in will correct it so what but uh, his intent should not be questioned and honesty is uh, honesty of purpose honesty of actions uh, leave the army alone no to too many uh, to too much of uh, you know media scrutiny fine but uh, let the soldier be let him perform he is doing a very difficult job very challenging job the x factor Uh, is unbelievable functioning at you know it's the month of january uh, and the temperatures are minus 30 to minus 40 and the wind speeds are about 30 40 knots uh, regular uh, so leave him alone yes sir i absolutely agree with you sir he deserves the biggest salute from the nation for all that he's doing for us and sir thank you very much for being with us on our show we're looking forward to meeting you again sir and wish you a very happy army day in advance sir thank you very much wish you all your viewers a happy army day also uh, i would end uh, i should have started this but i'll end by saluting uh, all the soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice in the last year and salute all the soldiers who defend us so that we sleep peacefully we function well and we we go on to stability and economic development and nation our well being of people are dependent on his sacrifices thank you very much thank you jain. so much jain